Welcome back, everyone. Another one of our game recaps. This is the first NFL Sunday of the regular season that we're doing one of these, so that's exciting. Lots of games today. The first one is going to be the Ravens and the Texans. The Ravens destroyed them 25-9. to For the passers, C.J. Stroud had a decent day. I don't really expect anything from him uh, for fantasy this year, but he was 28-44 for 242 yards. This is going to be a year of learning for him. Uh, this is a really young team, so don't expect too much from him this season. Damian Pierce, do not panic about Damian Pierce. He had 11 carries for 38 yards, no touchdowns. Devin Singletary had 7 carries for 15 yards. They played this game with Rex Burkhead last year, too. This is going to be Damian Pierce's job. He is a better back. It's clear from the yards per carry there, 3.5 to 2.1. Kind of similar with what was happening with Burkhead last year. Hang on to Damian Pierce. Do not panic because of this. If anything, if people are panicking in your league, buy low on him for sure. Uh, Stroud also chipped in 20 yards on the ground. Noah Brown had a carry for negative one yards also. For the receivers, Nico Collins led the way. He had six catches on 80 yards. Robert Woods had six catches for 57 yards too. Is, is interesting. I'll pull up the, uh, the snap count here. This is from PFF, Nathan Jonke. He does a really good job with all these snap count charts. Um, so Robert Woods led the way for all receivers as far as snaps and routes run were concerned. Well, actually just snaps. Uh, routes run was led by Noah Brown, which is interesting. And actually, if you want to count tight ends, Dalton Schultz had more routes run than anybody, but he only had two catches. So Robert Woods had 58 snaps, 40 routes run, and 10 targets. Nico Collins had 55 snaps, 39 routes run, and 11 targets. So Nico Collins, even though he was the highest producer here, he was second in routes run, third, or he was third in routes run, second in snaps, uh, but first in targets. So that's interesting. I don't think really that there's going to be a clear, like, you got to go get this guy from this receiver group. If anything, Nico Collins is going to be that guy, but I'm not ready to say okay, Nico Collins is going to be a fantasy stud for sure this season. There's a lot of fantasy analysts out there who are saying that he's great because he's tall, but he's probably going to be the number one here, but just don't expect too much from him because this is, again, a young team, a rookie quarterback. We got to have a little patience with the Texans uh, for sure. But yeah, Nico Collins led the way, 80 yards. Robert Woods at 57. Tank Dell... He was who I was expecting to emerge, and I still think he will. Like His role is going to grow more and more throughout the season, but he started out with three catches and 34 yards today. Noah Brown had three catches for 20 yards. He was that leader in routes run that we talked about, but he was in the mix here with a lot of guys who had four targets. So Tank Dell had four targets. Noah Brown had four targets. Mike Boone had four targets. Dalton Schultz had four targets. Robert Woods had 10, and Nico Collins had 11. Um, Mike Boone, the backup running back, uh, the third running back actually, had three catches for 18 yards. Uh, Xavier Hutchinson had a catch for nine. Damian Pierce had two catches for nine. Dalton Schultz had two catches for four. I'm still expecting Dalton Schultz to have a decent role here, but he's probably just not going to be that. Like He's more of a bi-week fill-in, uh, play the matchup sort of tight end, more than a guy that you just set it and forget it every week. Because there was a lot of reports saying that he could be the number one receiver here, but Clearly, that's not true. And there was reports in the preseason saying that Robert Woods was possibly getting cut also. And here he is, you know, with the tying for the the, the team lead in reception. So um, Robert Woods playing a role here. Really interesting to see that. Nico Collins probably going to be the wide receiver one here. Don't count out Dalton Schultz. Don't count out Damian Pierce. If you're playing anybody from the Texans besides Damian Pierce, and really even Damian Pierce at this point because he, he had this game today, but the Texans are going to need some patience this year. So um, just think about that before you, you play a Texan this year. It was a strange game for the Ravens today. Lamar Jackson did not have a good fantasy day at all. 17-22 to 22 for 169 yards, no touchdowns and a pick. Uh, but they did win the game, so um, I... I Obviously, don't expect this low of an output from Lamar Jackson every week, especially since J.K. Dobbins is probably out for the season. So hang on to Lamar. Keep playing him. This is just this is a weird game against a team that they were clearly a lot better than. 
Um, Lamar led the way for all rushers. He had six carries for 38 yards. Gus Edwards was behind him. He had eight carries for 32. J.K. Dobbins had eight carries for 22 and a touchdown. Justice Hill had eight carries for nine yards and two touchdowns. And Zay Flowers had two carries for nine yards as well. So J.K. Dobbins probably out for the year with a torn Achilles. So who replaces J.K. Dobbins? I'm thinking in the immediate future, it's going to be Gus Edwards on the ground. First and second down, it's going to be Gus Edwards. Third down, it's going to be Justice Hill. Maybe Justice Hill, like, it wouldn't make any sense to have Justice Hill as the goal line back when you have Gus, Gus the bus. So I don't expect that to happen. But Gus Edwards doesn't usually play in the passing game like that. So I'm expecting Justice Hill to be on third down, Gus Edwards on first and second. And they might call up Melvin Gordon from their practice squad because he's there right now. Leonard Fournette's out there. Kareem Hunt's out there. Keaton Mitchell was hurt for this game, so he he's also an option. He, he's more similar to Hill than Gus Edwards. But I don't think there's going to be one clear guy that we go get. If you're going to pick anybody, I would say Gus Edwards because he's the best back. But this could just be a mess the rest of the year, similar to how it was last year. Um, just kind of unpredictable from the Ravens rushers uh, the rest of the way forward because of that uh, unfortunate injury to J.K. Dobbins. Zay Flowers led the way for all receivers. He had nine catches for 78 yards. Unbelievable day for him. Definitely go add Zay Flowers. If if for some reason he's available in your league, go get him ASAP. But, I mean, he was getting drafted in the middle rounds there towards the end. So um, whoever drafted him, congratulations. You have a really good receiver on your team who clearly they want to get involved because this was his very first game, and they're already giving him 10 targets. So um, really good stuff from him. And this was a bad day from Lamar also throwing the ball. And Zay Flowers was still able to put out nine catches for 78 yards. Really awesome stuff from him. Odell had two catches for 37. Rashad Bateman had three catches for 35. J.K. Dobbins had two catches for 15. And Isaiah Likely, real bummer seeing Isaiah Likely only have one catch for four yards and one target. I thought there, there was going to be a big day here because the Texans weren't that great against tight ends last year. So I thought that this was going to be a much bigger game from Isaiah Likely, but clearly that was not the case. If anything, it makes me think of, are they going to use Mark Andrews like this? Like, is Mark Andrews going to take a back seat to Zay Flowers? That doesn't sound totally likely, but with this new offensive coordinator, Greg Roman really likes throwing tight ends. And with Todd Munkin, maybe he's not as interested as in working in the tight end to this passing game. Maybe that's what the indication is here. I'm not saying that's for sure what's going on, but that is something that we need to be uh, conscious of as the season moves forward. And uh, I'll pull up the snap count for them too from PFF. Uh, Odell led the way for all receivers and snaps. He had 59 and 30 routes run. He led the way in routes run also. But Zay Flowers having that monster game, still second in snaps, second in routes run, just kind of goes to show you like this is the snap counts and the routes run they aren't the end all be all. They just kind of help you paint the picture a little bit. So um, just keep that in mind. And, and like this, for example, Rashad Bateman having 25 snaps and 17 routes run, Odell Beckham having 59 snaps and 30, and they still had similar output as far as yards were. Uh, Odell had 37 yards to the air. Rashad Bateman actually had another catch, uh, had one more catch than Odell with 35 yards. So, um, to me, that says that Odell, they want to work in Odell more than they do Bateman, but something to watch moving forward. Um, Aguilar had 24 and eight routes run. Isaiah Likely had 23 routes run, just five less than Zay Flowers, uh, 46 snaps. Really weird stuff that he was only targeted one time. Um, but as we move forward, keep in mind, Zay Flowers, people who drafted him probably got a steal. And Gus Edwards is the name I would add if I was going to add any Ravens running back, but I'm not expecting much out of the Ravens running back room this year. Next game is the Bengals and the Browns. The Browns destroyed the Bengals 24-3. to What the hell happened? Because Joe Burrow was 14-31 of for 82 yards. There was some rain in this game, but still, that is an abysmal stat line. Jake Browning came in and threw a pass. I don't know what the hell, like... I mean, the rain happened, but at the same time, even for a rain game, this is just atrocious stuff from Joe Burrow today. 
Uh, maybe that injury is lingering. That's the only thing I could really think of on top of the rain. Joe Mixon had 13 carries for 56 yards. He is the guy. If they are going to be giving the ball to a running back, it is going to be Joe Mixon. There was some reports that Chris Evans was going to get worked in, but Joe Mixon, if like I said, if they're going to give the ball to a running back at all, it is going to be Joe Mixon, regardless of how many snaps they were out there or anything like that. So Mixon is definitely the guy. Jamar Chase had five catches for 39 yards. This game was a product of Joe Burrow playing bad. So um, five catches for 39 yards, okay for a middling receiver. Obviously not what you would expect from a star like Jamar Chase. So there will be better days for sure. If there's any reason that people are freaking out about Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, please trade for those guys because they are still elite players in the NFL. Joe Mixon had three catches for 17. Irv Smith also had three catches for 17. Tyler Boyd had two catches for 10. And T. Higgins, one of the weirdest stat lines you will ever see. Zero catches, zero yards, eight targets. Eight targets. What happened? Because I, I have T. Higgins on some of my teams, and whenever he plays and he's healthy, he's money in the bank. He He's good to go for like 15 fantasy points, something like that every game. Here... He gets one less target than Jamar Chase and doesn't catch any of them. So just brutal stuff from T. Higgins today. Uh, pull up the snap chart. So T. Higgins actually led the the team in snaps. He had 54 uh, to Jamar Chase's 53, but clearly the work was just, just insane stuff there. Tyler Boyd had 47. Um, and then you see Joe Mixon there. Not a crazy lead on Travion Williams as far as snap count but you know they were behind by a lot at the end of the game and whenever they're giving a ball to a running back it's going to be Joe Mixon so don't buy into Chris Evans don't buy into Travion Williams and overall this game I'm just considering it a wash because uh you know uh, I guess pun intended with the rain but Joe you got Joe Burrow sucking He, he he never sucks this bad Jamar Chase, his his output is just from Joe Burrow sucking. So um, I'm just going to write this one off. I'm just not going to pay attention to it. I'm going to say Joe Burrow's going to be Joe Burrow eventually, and this was just a weird game from him. Deshaun Watson playing in the same reign that Joe Burrow did was 16-29 for 154 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. Not a great day when you look at it just on its own, but... When you compare it to what Joe Burrow did, this was a hell of a day for Deshaun Watson. Uh, Nick Chubb had 18 carries for 106 yards. Awesome stuff from him. Deshaun Watson added 45 on the ground and a touchdown. That's going to be a lot of like what makes Deshaun Watson better than certain quarterbacks is that he can run like this. Jerome Ford had 15 carries for 36 yards. Don't pay attention to that volume because they were beating the crap out of the Bengals. And that yards per carry, 2.4 to 5.9, is not even close. So uh, don't worry about Nick Chubb's workload getting eaten into it all. Elijah Moore had two carries for 19 yards as well. And Elijah Moore also led the team in receiving. He had three catches for 43 yards on seven targets. Amari Cooper had a similar stat line, uh, had three catches for 37 yards on seven targets. I don't expect Amari Cooper to always have work that is similar to Elijah Moore. This could be a thing, but I'm not expecting it to be a thing just yet because this was a weird game. And let's let's pull these up. So Donovan Peoples-Jones actually led the team in snaps for all receivers by a decent margin. He had 66. Elijah Moore was the next closest. He had 52. And Amari Cooper had 45. So... I don't think we should read into this too much because this was such a beatdown. But something to definitely watch moving forward is Elijah Moore's workload. Is he going to stay getting a whole bunch of targets the same rate that Amari Cooper is? I don't think that's the case, but it's definitely something to watch out for. David Njoku had two catches for 24 on three targets. Nick Chubb, actually leading the team in catches, had four catches for 21. Awesome stuff there for Nick Chubb managers because... The, the big thing about him was, is he going to get passing work? Well, here he is getting passing work. Jordan Akins had a catch for 12. Donovan Peoples-Jones leading the receiver room in snaps by a good margin. Only had one catch for 12 yards and two targets. Harrison Bryant also chipped in two catches for five yards and a touchdown. 
The thing I learned from here is that Elijah Moore could have a, a sizable role going forward, but I wouldn't bank on it just yet. Nick Chubb still looks amazing. And Deshaun Watson, don't completely judge him because this, uh, well, you can judge him for several other reasons, but don't judge him because this stat line isn't great. Look at Joe Burrow's stat line. This is solid. I think Deshaun Watson is going to be a really good fantasy quarterback moving forward. Next game is the Bucks and the Vikings. The Bucks beat them 20 to 17. The Bucks are going to be really interesting this year. Baker Mayfield was 21 to 34, 173 yards, two touchdowns, and no picks. Really solid day for him. I'm not ready to say that Baker Mayfield is a reliable fantasy starter, but he's definitely trending in that direction. Rashad White had 17 carries for 39 yards. I'm not sure if he's a very good running back, but he did dominate the workload here. Sean Tucker was behind him. He had five carries for 15 yards. Look out for him to get more and more touches as the season goes on. He was an undrafted rookie, but he only went undrafted because of a heart condition. He was super productive at Syracuse. Really good back, so watch out for him. Baker Mayfield added 11 on the ground. Chase Edmonds had two carries for eight yards. And Rakeem Jarrett had a carry for no yards there. So Rashad White dominating the workload. Mike Evans had six catches for 66 yards and a touchdown. Led the way for all receivers today. Had 10 targets for him. Chris Godwin was behind him. He had five catches for 51 yards on six targets. Kate Otten had two catches for 19. Devin Tompkins had two catches for 10. Rashad White added two catches for 10. Sean Tucker added two catches for 9. Trey Palmer, the rookie for Nebraska, had two catches for eight and a touchdown. So we'll pull up the snap counts here. Mike Evans and Chris Goblin dominating 58 and 57, 35 and 36. Really awesome stuff from them. You know, it's not like we were expecting any reason to move off of them, but more proof that they're dominating there. Rashawn White absolutely dominating the workload, like I was saying earlier. 54 snaps and Sean Tucker was second closest with 10. Kate Otten dominating the workload for tight ends, 66-32. Kate Otten is more of a desperation tight end, like borderline Dalton Schultz, kind of like not not your lock it in tight end one, but if you're in a pinch, he's you could do much worse than Kate Otten. And Mike Evans. Is he going to be reliable for Baker Mayfield the rest of the way through? If this game is any indication, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans are going to be taking less of a hit than I originally thought going into the season. So the most interesting thing here is that Baker Mayfield, good, question mark, and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, they should most likely be in lineups as we move forward. For the Vikings, Kirk Cousins was busy. 33 of 44, 344 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Awesome stuff from him. This is going to be a passing offense. If this game is any indication, they are going to rely heavily on Kirk Cousins. So he's going to be a solid starter for fantasy lineups going forward. Alexander Madison led the way for all rushers. He had 11 carries and 34 yards. I'm expecting more from him, but this isn't a very promising sign that they're going to rely on. Like Even if they do have Alexander Madison as the the bell cow moving forward i'm not sure if they're going to be running the ball that much so watch out for that justin jefferson had a huge day nine catches for 150 yards on 12 targets amazing stuff from him it's more of the same from justin jefferson jordan addison had four catches for 61 yards and a touchdown really good day for him but he is going to be one of my sell highs because he was third in snaps behind kj osborne by a pretty decent margin uh, I'll pull it up right now because I'm talking about it. 58 to 36 as far as the snap production, 44 to 31 as far as routes run. They had the same amount of targets, just Jordan Addison had the touchdown. I'm not saying that KJ Osborne is going to outproduce Jordan Addison, but there's only so many targets for TJ Hawkinson, Justin Jefferson, Addison and Osborne, and Alexander Madison out of the backfield, where I don't think that Jordan Addison can keep this up every week. But we'll just have to see there. Hawkinson had eight catches for 35. We knew he was going to be a target monster. But we also had a feeling that he wasn't going to get a whole bunch of yards with them. So this is probably going to be the standard TJ Hawkinson stat line moving forward. Josh Oliver, the tight end from San Jose, had three catches for 32. KJ Osborne had three catches for 31. 
Ty Chandler had a catch for 18. Alexander Madison had three catches for 10 and a touchdown. And CJ Ham had two catches for seven yards as well. So Justin Jefferson confirming that number one spot. TJ Hawkinson confirming that he's going to be a target monster. Addison had a really good game. I just want to keep an eye on his usage as far as KJ Osborne's production is concerned. The, those two might be going back and forth uh, throughout the year. And Kirk Cousins is solidifying himself as a starting quarterback in fantasy moving forward. Next game is the Saints and the Titans. The Saints pulled this one out 16-15. to Ryan Tannehill had an absolutely brutal day. 16-34, to 198 yards, three picks, and no touchdowns. I think this is going to be Malik Willis's job eventually. Will Levis didn't play today. Malik Willis was the backup. He looked decent enough in the preseason. I think it's a matter of time before he becomes the starter here. Derrick Henry had 15 carries for 63 yards. Solid day for him. You just wish that he would have fallen in the end zone once. Ty J. Spears had three carries for 27 yards. Traylon Burks had a carry for nine. And Ryan Tannehill only added five on the ground as well. DeAndre Hopkins was a target monster. He had 13 targets, 7 catches, and 65 yards. Nick Westbrook-Akine had 4 catches for 58 yards on 7 targets. Traylon Burks only having 2 catches for 18 yards and 3 targets. Derrick Henry having 2 catches for 56 yards. Awesome receiving stuff from him. J. Spears only adding the 1-4-1 one, one there. With how bad Ryan Tannehill played... I think the only thing that we can get from this receiving group is that DeAndre Hopkins is going to be a target monster regardless of where he goes. Traylon Burks led the way in snaps, but only three targets. Nick Westbrook-Akine more than doubled that. DeAndre Hopkins being third on the team in snaps, but you know Akine, Traylon Burks, and Hopkins all had a similar amount of routes run. And Hopkins just dominating the target share, like like we've been saying. But watch out for Malik Willis. I think it's a matter of time before he gets in here. I'm not sure if that's the best thing as far as fantasy value for the receivers getting boosted. But it may just make this team better. Because Ryan Tannehill did not play well today at all. And even if we stick with Ryan Tannehill, there's no guarantee that this receiving group is going to get any love there either. So watch out for Malik Willis. Derek Carr had a pretty decent day for the Saints today. 23 of 33, 305 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. This is real similar stuff to what he used to do for the Raiders. So classic Derek Carr there. Jamal Williams had 18 carries for 45 yards. No Kendra Miller, no Alvin Kamara. So he got the lion's share of the work today. But the Titans have a pretty stingy run defense. So that's why. And Jamal Williams isn't really known for having a whole bunch of yards either. So Rashid Shaheed had two carries for 11. Tony Jones had a carry for five. Tony Jones is the backup running back. I think we just learned that Jamal Williams played like Jamal Williams and Derek Carr played like Derek Carr. And Chris Olave played like Chris Olave. This is a very Olave stat line. Eight catches, 112 yards, no touchdowns. Rashid Shaheed had five catches for 89 yards and a touchdown. Michael Thomas had five catches for 61. Good to see him get involved. He only had two less targets than Chris Olave. Jawan Johnson had three catches for 36. Jamal Williams added two catches for seven. Everybody played the way that they're supposed to. I think from now on, we can expect classic Derek Carr in a Saints uniform. Next game is the Panthers and the Falcons. The Falcons pulled this one out 24 to 10. Bryce Young was 20 to 38 for 146 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. This is his very first game for one. And two, they don't have a whole lot of weapons for him to throw to. So I wouldn't take this as, hey, Bryce Young isn't good because he's he's going to be fine. It's just this year, with the issues they've been having somewhat unexpectedly on the offensive line, they don't have, like, DJ Chark and, you know, DJ Chark being out on any other team wouldn't be as big of a deal, but that's how depleted the, the Panthers are right now. So, um you know, don't take too much away from this game for Bryce Young. He's going to be fine as the season goes. He's going to get better than this, but don't count on him. I don't think he should be someone that we count on for fantasy at all this year. Miles Sanders had 18 carries for 72 yards. He's a really underrated rusher. He was fifth in the league in rushing last year. Don't be surprised if he becomes a, a really, like, upper echelon fantasy back this year. 
Chuba Hubbard had nine carries for 60 yards. Solid day for him. Bryce Young had 17 yards on three carries, and LaVisca Chenault added two carries for five yards as well. Hayden Hurst led the way with five catches for 41 yards and a touchdown. Awesome day for him. If you had him as your tight end fill-in for Mark Andrews or Travis Kelsey, congratulations. This was awesome for you. Miles Sanders had four catches for 26 yards as well. Terrace Marshall had two for 23 Jonathan Mingo had two for 17. I'm expecting Jonathan Mingo to get more and more catches as the season goes on. I really like receivers who get drafted in the same class as quarterbacks. LaVisca Chenault had two catches for 16. Adam Thielen had two catches for 12. Chuba Hubbard added two catches for nine. Pull up the snap sheet here. Adam Thielen led the way in snaps. Terrace Marshall wasn't far behind him. Terrace Marshall led the way in routes run, but Mingo... Marshall, Thielen were all kind of the same routes run, snaps wise. Terrace Marshall led the way in targets. Uh, but Hayden Hurst uh, is the clear winner as far as receiving production today. And he only ran 27 routes. So, and, and Miles Sanders leading by a considerable margin ahead of Chuba Hubbard as well. Hayden Hurst is going to be a really good fill in because rookie, especially rookie quarterbacks who don't have a lot of options to throw to. The tight end is a really nice safety valve for him, and so is the running back for that matter, but specifically the tight end. Look out for Hayden Hurst as a bye week fill-in and an injury fill-in, and Miles Sanders, he's solidifying his status as a top 15 back right now, and let's not expect too much out of Bryce Young moving forward as he gets worked into the league and doesn't have the best weapons around him. For the Falcons, Desmond Ritter was 15-18 for 115 yards and a touchdown. This is the classic not taking any chances stat line because Tyler Algier and Bijan Robinson were the only fantasy relevant players on this team. Algier led the way in rushing. He had 15 carries for 75 yards and two touchdowns, and Bijan had 10 carries for 56 yards. It's going to be fascinating to see how this split uh, develops as we move forward. Pull up the uh, Falcons snap sheet here. Bijan led the way in snaps, but it is so even, and Algier got more carries by a pretty decent margin, and Algier got both the touchdowns on the ground too, so Algier is going to be relevant. Bijan's role is going to develop more and more as the season goes on. I'm just not sure that they can get away with relying on the run game this much against a better team, but that'll be something that we have to watch, and the receivers were... It was just an abysmal day for receivers. Aside from Bijan Robinson, who had six catches for 27 yards and a touchdown, Kyle Pitts only had three targets, two catches for 44 yards. Matt Collins led the way for all receivers. He had three catches for 31 yards. Drake London, zero catches, one target. Just brutal stuff from him. Hopefully, like, don't drop him. For sure, don't drop him. But what the hell is going on is a very fair question to ask because this is really bizarre stuff here. This stat line and the T. Higgins stat line, the, the, the zeros are very perplexing. Let's take another week to see what happens. Don't start Drake London next week, but don't get rid of him right now because this is this might be the lowest that his value is all season him and Desmond Ritter had a really good connection last year granted Kyle Pitts wasn't there at the end of the year but Drake London is super talented they took him in the top 10 I'm just concerned that this team is not going to throw it hardly ever but at the same time targeting Drake London once and n him never getting the ball is baffling so be patient with Drake London Watch for Bijan's role to grow more and more this year. And Tyler Algier is going to be a really solid bye week fill-in, really solid injury fill-in, and he could be even more as the season goes on. So he'd be a really good add. Next game is the Jags and the Colts. The Jags pulled this one out 31-21. to And the Stars showed out for Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence was 34-32, 241 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Really good completion percentage there. I'll be expecting more yards as the season goes on. Travis Etienne had a great day. 18 carries for 77 yards and a touchdown. Just awesome stuff. Keep plugging them into your lineup. Trevor Lawrence had 21 on the ground. Tank Bigsby had 7 carries for 13 yards and a touchdown. This will probably be the standard Tank Bigsby stat line. 
not a whole lot of yards, some carries here and there, maybe vulturing a touchdown every now and then. But I still think Etienne is going to be the lead back here by a, a noticeable margin. Not tremendous, but noticeable for sure. Calvin Ridley had a great day, eight catches for 101 yards and a touchdown on 11 targets. Zay Jones had five catches for 55 yards and a touchdown. Evan Ingram had five catches for 49 yards. Travis Etienne had five catches as well for 27 yards. Christian Kirk was the big disappointment. One catch for nine yards and on three targets. I was expecting there to be a pretty noticeable drop-off after Christian Kirk. I thought it was going to be Calvin Ridley one, Christian Kirk at two, and then Zay Jones and Evan Ingram kind of trading off number three. But from what this game will tell us is... I might have Christian Kirk and that Zay Jones, Evan Ingram pairing backwards. We'll just have to see how it looks next game. I'm not ready to completely say that's going to be the case because Christian Kirk was so good last year. But we look at the snap chart. Zay Jones led the way in snaps. Uh, he was right there with Calvin Ridley in routes run. Christian Kirk only on the field for 43 snaps. Evan Ingram was on the field for more snaps than Christian Kirk. And look at the snap differential for the running backs. Travis Etienne had 56 to Tank Bigsby's 15. That's super noticeable there. But I think we just have to monitor how these targets are getting divvied up between Jacksonville. Is it going to be just Calvin Ridley and everyone else just fighting for targets? That's what seems to be the case right now. But keep playing Travis Etienne. Keep playing Trevor Lawrence. This is going to be a high-powered offense. For the Colts, Anthony Richardson played better than I thought he would. 24-37, 223 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Really solid day for him. It should be noted that the Jags aren't the best defense, but I really thought that Anthony Richardson was going to have more accuracy problems than he did. And Minshew went out there for uh, two passes as well after Richardson got hurt, but it sounds like Richardson's going to be fine. He also had 10 carries for 40 yards and a touchdown, led all rushers in a big way. Deion Jackson had 13 carries for 14 yards. Brutal day on the ground. Jake Funk had two for 10. Evan Hole had a carry for one as well. Michael Pittman, awesome day. Eight catches, 97 yards and a touchdown for 11 targets. I really thought it was going to be more evenly divided between Alec Pierce and the tight ends and uh, Josh Downs or Isaiah McKenzie, whoever was going to take that primary slot receiver spot. But Josh Downs really emerged today. I, I thought he showed some things. Three catches for 30 yards on seven targets. His route running is really good. He's going to be a guy. I mentioned before, I really like receivers who are drafted in the same class as their quarterback. And I think Josh Downs and Anthony Richardson are going to develop some chemistry here. So watch out for that. Kylan Granson led the way for all tight ends. He had four catches for 39 yards. Drew Ogletree also had a catch for 20. Deion Jackson, he usually does most of his damage to the air. Five catches for 14 yards there. Jake Funk had a catch for 12. Evan Hull had a catch for six. Alec Pierce only had one catch for five on three targets. I really thought that he had developed more of a chemistry with Anthony Richardson. That was a lot of the talk out of their training camp. But... He didn't get very many looks today. Josh Downs, pretty like not there isn't a huge difference in snap count between Josh Downs and Alec Pierce, fifty seven to sixty six. Michael Pittman leading the way, of course, but it's really interesting that Josh Downs got as much play as he did. And Deion Jackson led the way big time for running backs. Fifty one snaps and the next closest was Jake Funk with thirteen. Evan Hole only had eight, so that was surprising to see also, but the thing to keep in mind here is Michael Pittman is legit, even with Anthony Richardson under center. And Richardson, it's going to be interesting to see how he does against better defenses, but he's absolutely in the conversation for fantasy starter the rest of the way. Next game is the 49ers and the Steelers. The Niners beat the crap out of him 30-7. to Brock Purdy had a solid day. Coming back from Tommy John, 19-29, 220 yards, two touchdowns, and zero picks. Really good day for him. Christian McCaffrey also had an awesome day. 22 carries, 152 yards rushing, and a touchdown, proving why he's RB1. Brock Purdy also chipped in 20 on the ground. Elijah Mitchell just had 5 carries for 10 yards. Debo Samuel had 2 carries for 8. Sam Darnold chipped in 2 for negative 2. Christian McCaffrey, baller. Brock Purdy, really reliable option because of the people he has around him. Like Brandon Ayuk, eight catches, 129 yards, and two touchdowns on, caught all of his targets. 
awesome stuff from him. There's a guy who kept commenting under all of my Instagram posts that Brandon Ayuk was going to be a top five receiver. Hey, if this game is any indication, that guy's not going to be so crazy after all. But we'll have to watch that. Debo Samuel had five catches for 55 yards. George Kittle, rough day coming back from that injury. Three catches for 19 yards for him. And Christian McCaffrey added three catches for 17 yards. Keep an eye on Brandon Ayuk. It'll be interesting to see if he goes up and down like he's done the rest of his career or if this just keeps on going as a steady stream of Brandon Ayuk production. I don't expect Debo Samuel to have less targets than IU consistently, but that'll be something we have to watch and comfortably play Christian McCaffrey as if there's ever a question. And Brock Purdy, if he's floating around on your waiver wire and you need an option at quarterback, you can absolutely do worse than Brock Purdy. For the Steelers, Kenny Pickett did okay. 31 of 46, 232 yards, a touchdown, two picks. This is going to be one of, if not the best defense he plays all year, so... I wouldn't take too much away from that. It's it's promising that he was able to complete 31 of 46 and get 232 yards. Najee Harris had six carries for 31, and Jalen Warren had three carries for six. The, the rushers didn't really do much. They were playing from behind, so there wasn't a whole lot that they could do as far as the running game was concerned. Deontay Johnson went down with a hamstring injury in the middle of this game, so Allen Robinson got a lot of play. Five catches for 64 yards, led the way in targets with eight. Deontay, before he went down, had three catches for 48. Calvin Austin had six catches for 37. Interesting to see him there. He was filling in that slot receiver Deontay Johnson role when he went down. George Pickens had five catches for 36. I'm expecting bigger things from him. There was some, uh, like, he almost had an amazing touchdown catch with one hand. Like, this guy, he's got all the potential in the world. Keep him on your team. Don't trade him. Hang on to him. He's going to be really valuable later on in the year. Connor Hayward had two catches for 19. Jalen Warren had five catches for 12. Awesome stuff from him through the air uh, relative to what running backs were doing today because uh, Najee Harris only had two catches for two. Pat Fryermuth had one catch for three yards and a touchdown. Pull up the uh, snap chart for them. So Allen Robinson and George Pickens were leading the way as far as snaps. Deontay Johnson had 27 before he went down. Calvin Austin replaced Deontay. Darnell Washington and Pat Fryermuth. It's interesting to see how close their snaps are. Pat Fryermuth had that touchdown catch, of course, though, and Darnell Washington wasn't targeted at all, as opposed to Pat Fryermuth, who was targeted four times. And Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, 33 snaps to 25. That might be because they were playing from behind, and Jalen Warren can be that more explosive guy through the passing game. But it's, it's still interesting that Najee Harris and Jalen Warren aren't that far off because Najee Harris is being drafted as a workhorse back, and I just don't think he's going to be that long-term for this team. So keep an eye on Kenny Pickett. He's going to play better than this. The 49ers just have an awesome defense. We're going to learn more about this Pittsburgh rushing game when they aren't playing from so far behind. And Allen Robinson leading the way in targets is noteworthy with eight. But I think George Pickens is going to surpass him. That That's the guy that they want to give the ball to. That's the guy who's getting all the publicity out of camp. He's their guy. Don't expect Allen Robinson to be outpacing George Pickens for very many games after this. Next game is the Commanders and the Cardinals. The Commanders pulled this one out 20-16. to This was a lot closer than it was supposed to be. Dobbs was 21-30 for 132 yards, no touchdowns and no picks. Another super conservative passing line. That's probably how they were able to keep the score so close. James Conner had 14 carries for 62 yards, led in a big way because Keontae Ingram had 5 carries for negative 4 yards. So James Conner, very comfortable as the workhorse in this offense. Hollywood Brown had a carry for 29 yards. Rondell Moore had 2 carries for 12 and Josh Dobbs added negative three on the ground as well. Rondell Moore led the way for all receivers. He had three catches for 33 yards. Hollywood Brown had three catches for 28. Trey McBride had two catches for 23. Interesting that Rondell Moore and Hollywood were so close, but this was Josh Dobbs' first game with this team, and he had just got here very recently. I wouldn't take too much away from the output of these receivers. But Zach Ertz being a reliable safety valve with six catches and 21 yards. James Conner, also a reliable safety valve, five catches for eight yards. Keep an eye on Zach Ertz. He might be a good fill-in tight end the rest of the way. 
Michael Wilson, the rookie from Stanford, had two catches for 19. The big takeaway here is that James Conner, going to have a stranglehold on this rushing game. Keontae Ingram is no threat whatsoever. Sam Howell had a decent day for Washington, 19-31, 202 yards, a touchdown, and a pick for him. Brian Robinson led all rushers in a big way, 19 carries for 59 yards. This is what I kept saying. Like It, it never really made sense that Antonio Gibson was drafted ahead of him because last year they had every reason to not play Brian Robinson. Coming off of getting shot, he was a rookie. They didn't have to give him a whole bunch of carries every game, and they still did. It wouldn't make sense that all of a sudden they're going to change their mind now that Brian Robinson's healthy and has another year of experience behind him that they would just give all the carries for, to Antonio Gibson or even like split this up even didn't really make sense to me. I think Brian Robinson going forward is the clear lead back for Washington and this game just confirmed that. Howell also had two carries for 11 yards and a touchdown. Antonio Gibson just had the three carries for nine yards. Chris Rodriguez also had three carries for seven. And Curtis Samuel added a carry for six. Samuel was also the leading receiver. He had five catches for 54 yards. Logan Thomas had four catches for 43. Jahan Dotson had five catches for 40. Terry McLaurin had two catches for 31. Nobody really got it going in this game. Cole Turner had a catch for 17. Antonio Gibson had a catch for 10. Brian Robinson had a catch for seven. The snap count here... See, Brian Robinson almost doubling Antonio Gibson's snaps is interesting, and the routes run. If the game lends itself to a bunch of passing, we'll see Antonio Gibson and Brian Robinson's workload get closer and closer, but with them running as much as they did in this game, which didn't really make sense with how much better, seemingly, that their offense is than the Cardinals, but... Maybe that says something about how they trust Brian Robinson more than they trust Sam Howell. That will just be something that we have to monitor moving forward. And Sam Howell is just going to get more comfortable as the games move on. Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson led in all snaps for receivers. Curtis Samuel was behind him. Deami Brown just had 19. Was not expecting Cole Turner to have that fewer snaps than John Bates, though. So interesting stuff. I think the main takeaway is that Brian Robinson is the lead dog. For sure, it never really made sense that Antonio Gibson was being drafted ahead of him. The next game was the Dolphins and the Chargers. The Dolphins won this one 36-34. This was the best game of the day. Tua was 28-45 of for 466 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. Awesome day for Tua. Raheem Mostert had 10 carries for 37 yards and a touchdown. Salvin Ahmed was backing him up. He had three carries for 11. Eric Ezukanma had two carries for 17 and Tua added five yards on the ground too. Devon A-Chain was a healthy scratch, but he's still kind of working back from a shoulder injury. I hesitate to say drop Devon A-Chain because I think his talent fits this scheme so well, and he was getting a lot of really good reviews out of camp. So if you have a spot for Devon A-Chain, hold on to him, but I wouldn't blame you for dropping him. I'm just not ready to say outright like, like, for example, Rashad Penny was a healthy scratch today. He's in a four-headed monster. Definitely drop him. But Raheem Mostert in his 30s. Jeff Wilson coming back from injury. Salvin Ahmed isn't the greatest producer. I think Devon A-Chain still has a path to be the number one rusher here. But it's going to take some time. You're going to need to have some patience. So, again, I wouldn't blame you at all for dropping him. Tyreek Hill was amazing. 11 catches, 215 yards, and two touchdowns on 15 targets. This is why I've had him as the number two receiver throughout the draft process. He is outstanding. He's quarterback proof. He's always going to put up numbers. Jalen Waddell also had a solid day. Four catches for 78 yards. Durham Smythe, I was surprised at how often he was getting used. Look at this. He was on the field for every single offensive snap. Tyreek Hill was only on there for 39 out of 62 snaps. Jalen Waddell, only 40, but Durham Smythe getting a ton of playing time. He had 44 yards, 7 targets. Braxton Berrios had 3 catches for 42 yards. River Craycraft had 3 catches for 40 yards and a touchdown. Alec Ingold had 2 catches for 34. Raheem Mostert adding 2 catches for 13 as well. Tyreek Hill, amazing. Raheem Mostert, Solid output because of that touchdown. When Jeff Wilson comes back, it may be a different story. 
Watch to see when Devon A. Chain stops being a healthy scratch. Don't blame you at all for dropping him. And Tua, creeping into that start no matter what territory in fantasy. For the Chargers, Justin Herbert was 23 of 33, 228 yards and a touchdown. Maybe there, there was a lot of talk about Kellen Moore coming in and getting the most out of Justin Herbert, having this aerial attack. Maybe he's bringing over what he used in Dallas with two backs, with Zeke and Tony Pollard, because the rushing game did most of the work here. 16 carries for Austin Eckler and 16 carries for Joshua Kelly as well. Eckler had 117 yards and a touchdown. Kelly was not that far behind, 91 yards and a touchdown. Really good stuff from the Chargers rushers. I think we may have been interpreting Kellen Moore's influence wrong in the offseason. Keenan Allen led the way for all receivers. He had six catches for 76 yards on nine targets. Austin Eckler added four catches for 47 yards. Mike Williams had four catches for 45. Donald Parham, the backup tight end, had three catches for 21 and a touchdown. Gerald Everett had two catches for 21. Quentin Johnson had two catches for nine. A lot of talk about Joshua Palmer getting more catches than him. I think his role is going to develop more as the season goes on. It'll just take some patience with him. Darius Davis had a catch for five. Joshua Palmer had a catch for four. The snap share looked like this. Keenan Allen led the way with 74. Mike Williams had 62. Joshua Palmer had 52. Quentin Johnson way far behind with only 22. Gerald Everett leading the way in snap share for all tight ends. And Austin Eckler and Joshua Kelly having super similar numbers. 41 snaps for Eckler and 38 for Kelly. Austin Eckler led by a pretty decent margin in routes run, but still, Kellen Moore may be bringing this dueling back. When when it was driving us all nuts, that, that split between Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard, when we all knew Tony Pollard was the guy, there might be something similar going on here with Joshua Kelly and Austin Eckler. We know Austin Eckler is the guy, but Joshua Kelly may be making a case to have his own fantasy relevance here because... If this game is any indication, the Chargers might just be a rushing offense. Next game is the Raiders and the Broncos. The Raiders took this one 17-16. Jimmy Garoppolo was 20-26 for 200 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. He's an underrated quarterback. He's going to be somebody that's going to be a popular bye week fill-in down the road. I don't think that the masses really have a lot of faith in him, but he has decent weapons around him. He knows this coach. He knows this system. There's going to be good things coming from Jimmy Garoppolo this year. Josh Jacobs led the way. He had 19 carries for 48 yards. Jimmy Garoppolo chipped in 11 on the ground, and Zamir White had two as well. Jacoby Myers led the way for all receivers, surprisingly. He had nine catches for 81 yards and two touchdowns on 10 targets. He also left this game with a pretty gnarly head injury, so he may not play next week. Devontae Adams might be a target machine in that case. Or Hunter Renfro could take Jacoby Myers' spot. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Adams had six catches for 66 yards in this one on nine targets. Josh Jacobs added two catches for 23 yards. Austin Hoover had an awesome catch for uh, 20 yards. DeAndre Carter had a catch for five, and Zamir White had a catch for five. Watch out for Jacoby Myers when he comes back from injury because he got a ton of targets in this one. And it was also interesting to see how little they played Hunter Renfro because I thought... Jacoby Myers and Hunter Renfro have pretty similar skill sets, and I thought that they would just feed off each other. But instead, that whole plate went to Jacoby, and Devontae Adams had less targets than Jacoby Myers. So, you know, I, I'm not... Devontae Adams is not the number two receiver in this offense. Devontae Adams is going to have days where he has more targets than this, and he should outpace Jacoby Myers for pretty much every game that they play together. But it is Josh McDaniels who really knows what's going to happen here. It would just be crazy to take arguably the best receiver of the last decade and put him behind Jacoby Myers because you know Jacoby Myers better, but who knows what's going to happen there. Josh Jacobs led the way in a, in a huge way for running back. So even though he's coming off of taking the preseason off, he's still you just plug him back into where he was. He's that good. Again, watch Jacoby Myers. That's the big takeaway here. Jimmy Garoppolo is solid, but Jacoby Myers could be a thing moving forward. Once he gets back from injury, it, it's a good idea to add him now, even though he's probably not going to play next week because he's going to be that in demand. 
and moving forward, he's going to be an option at receiver. Russell Wilson had a solid day for Denver, just not a whole lot of yards. 27-34, to 34, 177 yards, two touchdowns, and no picks. Javante Williams led the way for rushers, and it just blows my mind that they're giving him this much work after what a devastating knee injury he had last year. 13 carries for 52 yards for him. Samaj P. Ryan had 8 carries for 41, and Russell Wilson chipped in a carry as well. Samaj P. Ryan led the way for all receivers. He had 4 catches for 37 yards. Adam Troutman had 5 catches for 34. Cortland Sutton had 4 catches for 32 and a touchdown. Brandon Johnson had 2 catches for 31. Greg Dulcich had two catches for 22. Lil Jordan Humphrey had two catches for 11 and a touchdown. Marvin Mims just had two catches for nine yards. A little disappointing there. Javante Williams had four catches for five yards. Again, I can't believe that they're giving him all that work. Michael Burton had a catch for three. And Jaleel McLaughlin had a catch for negative seven. He's somebody who a lot of people were talking up coming out of that camp. But uh, it looks pretty clear here that Javante Williams and Samaj P. Ryan are the backs. Uh, I thought they were going to ease Javante in a little bit more in his first game, but clearly they didn't. Uh, 50-50 split between him and Samaj P. Ryan, 29 snaps for both of them. Cortland Sutton led the way for all receivers, no surprise there. Lil Jordan Humphrey and Brandon Johnson outpacing Marvin Mims was a surprise, um, but they, they were all pretty close in targets there. Cortland Sutton only having five targets is surprising, especially against uh, what is a weak Raiders secondary. I thought that Corden Sutton was going to do a little bit more today, but um, still, he had a solid day. He had the touchdown that saved his afternoon, but look for Javante Williams' role to increase more. If they're already giving him three carries and, what is it, four catches? Yeah, the, if they're already giving him that many touches first week back, he his role is just going to expand over time, so he could be a good buy-low candidate right now. Next game was the Eagles and the Patriots. The Eagles took this one 25 to 20. Jalen Hurts was 22 with 33 for 170 yards and a touchdown. Not the greatest day from him as far as fantasy output was concerned. Kenneth Gainwell led rushers in a big way. 14 carries for 54 yards. DeAndre Swift might just be a drop. I'm not ready to say that definitively, but he is absolutely trending in that direction. One carry for three yards. All the talk out of Eagles camp was that Kenneth Gainwell was the number one running back. And it seemed like fantasy managers were projecting that DeAndre Swift would be that guy because he has a bunch of talent. But this is what all the reporters out of that camp were saying, that Kenneth Gainwell is the guy. He is going to be a very popular ad this week. And if you drop DeAndre Swift after this game, I would not blame you at all because he tied Boston Scott with one carry for three yards. Jalen Hurts had nine carries for 37. Keep an eye on Gainwell. That is absolutely an ad right now. A.J. Brown had seven catches for 79 yards. He led the way for all receivers. Devontae Smith had seven catches for 47 yards and a touchdown. Each of them had 10 targets. Great stuff from them. Kenneth Gainwell had four catches for 20 yards, just adding to what was a very busy day for him. Quez Watkins had two catches for 17. Boston Scott had a catch for seven, and DeAndre Swift had a catch for zero yards. Dallas Goddard not hauling in his only target either is surprising, but great stuff from A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. Keep plugging them into your lineups. Dallas Goddard, don't expect this output very often. This is zero is pretty crazy, but DeAndre Swift is the name we want to look at. DeAndre Swift and Kenneth Gainwell are the two names we want to look at the most and for opposite reasons deandre swift might just be a drop kenneth gainwell add as soon as possible if he's available in your league for the patriots mac jones played really well in what is a, a super tough matchup 35 of 54 316 yards three touchdowns and an interception i've said it before and i'll say it again mac jones is a good quarterback people kept trying to say that bailey's happy was going to take his spot I don't think it was ever close. Mac Jones is a good quarterback. They put a lot on him for a reason. He is here to stay. Zeke led the way for all rushers. He had seven carries for 29 yards. He led the way today for new face in a new place and looks the weirdest in his new uniform. It's going to take some time before I get used to seeing Zeke as a New England Patriot. Ramondre Stevenson had 12 carries for 25 yards. He had an illness today that he was battling with, so... 
those carries might be more once he gets a little healthier. Mac Jones had 15 on the ground, but he's not really a runner. And Ty Montgomery also added a carry for seven yards. Kendrick Bourne led the way for all receivers. He had six catches for 64 yards and two touchdowns. Ramondre Stevenson had the same output except for the touchdown, six catches for 64 yards. Hunter Henry had a really good day, five catches for 56 yards and a touchdown. He's absolutely a tight end you want to keep in mind. He's He had some impressive catches too. I was surprised at how well he did. Demario Douglas had four catches for 40 yards. Mike Kosicki had three catches for 36. Juju had four catches for 33. And Zeke had five catches for 14. It's interesting how much they spread the ball around in this offense. A lot of passes, but Kendrick Bourne led the way in targets. No Devontae Parker in this one. Ramondre Stevenson had six. Hunter Henry had six. Demario Douglas had seven. Juju had seven. Zeke had seven. Super spread out. Really impressive stuff. The Patriots did the most with what they had in this game, and it's clear because going into this, everyone counted them out against the Eagles, and rightfully so. They lost this game, but they played a lot better than a lot of people expected them to, especially Mac Jones playing as well as he did. That That is super surprising, and keep an eye out for Zeke. He may just be a legit threat to Ramondre, but I'm not ready to say that because Ramondre was sick today. But Zeke is a very real thing, and Mac Jones, good quarterback. Next game was the Packers and the Bears. The Packers took this one 38 to 20. Jordan Love might be a decent option, 15 to 27 for 245 yards and three touchdowns. I'm not ready to say he's a legit starter in fantasy yet. I still want to see it a couple more games. But doing this without Christian Watson and a limited Romeo Dobbs is really impressive. Aaron Jones led the way for all rushers. He had nine carries on 41 yards and a touchdown. Patrick Taylor was behind him. He had five carries for 22 yards. A.J. Dillon leading the way in carries. He had 13 carries for only 19 yards, though. Jordan Love adding 12 on the ground. Jane Reed had a carry for negative two. Interesting to see this snap division because Aaron Jones clearly leading the way as a receiver. A.J. Dillon getting all the carries but not doing a whole lot with the yards. I wonder how long that's going to last. Aaron Jones having two catches for 86 yards and a touchdown. Luke Musgrave having three catches for 50 yards. He's a really solid tight end option if you're looking for somebody. Jaden Reed having two catches for 48. Romeo Dobbs limited, but had four catches for 26 yards and two touchdowns. Samari Torre had two catches for 18. A.J. Dillon added two for 17. Interesting stuff here. Dontavian Wicks, who didn't have a catch, had the most snaps for receivers. He had 37 and uh, close in routes run. Jaden Reed and Romeo Dobbs beat him in routes run. Uh, only by one, though. Uh, Reed had five targets. Dobbs had five targets. Malik Heath was in the running, too. He had 29 snaps. Nine routes run. Not as many there. But Samari Torre had 21. There wasn't a clear number one in this game. And it would have been different if they had a healthy Romeo Dobbs. I think he would have been the clear leader in snaps but that is still something to watch out for and Luke Musgrave leading in a big way for tight ends way over Tucker Craft uh, he had 45 snaps and 23 routes run and again that split between Dylan and Jones is still fascinating but I think the biggest takeaway here is that Jordan Love might just be a solid fantasy quarterback we'll just have to watch to see if it's just a weak Bears defense or if this is becoming a trend, like Jordan Love gets Christian Watson back and Romeo Dobbs at full strength, maybe he's a guy. We'll just have to see. For the Bears, it was more of the same. Justin Fields show, and they didn't come away with the win. 24-37 for Fields, 216 yards to the air, a touchdown and an interception. But he was also the leading rusher by a healthy margin. Nine carries for 59 yards for him. Khalil Herbert had nine carries for 27. Rashawn Johnson had five carries for 20 and a touchdown. Deontay Foreman had five carries for 16. Looks like a three-headed monster there. We'll just have to watch. Darnell Mooney led the way for all receivers. He had four catches for 53 yards and a touchdown. Really good stuff from him. Cole Komet had five catches for 44. Khalil Herbert had three catches for 37. Rashawn Johnson leading the way for receptions. He had six catches for 35. DJ Moore, surprisingly, only had two targets on two catches for 25 yards. This is kind of what I was talking about before. These Bears receivers are going to be unpredictable week to week, so 
I wasn't totally in on spending a high draft pick on DJ Moore, but don't count him out yet because you did spend such a premium pick, and maybe he does emerge as that guy because there was a lot of rave reviews about the connection that he had with Justin Fields in the preseason. So don't count him out just yet. I'm not willing to say he's a buy low either because this might just be a sporadic situation, but uh, watch out for that. I don't think that this DJ Moore output was an anomaly. Tyler Scott, the rookie, had two catches for 14. Deontay Foreman had two catches for eight. And Chase Claypool didn't haul in either of his two targets. Claypool, Mooney, and Moore led the way for all snaps. Uh, DJ Moore had the most routes run. Tyler Scott only had 13 snaps. Cole Komet led in a huge way for tight ends. This running back room is interesting. Rashawn Johnson led the way uh, for all running backs and snaps. He had 29 to Khalil Herbert's 27. Not what we were expecting there. And Deontay Foreman not far behind either with 21. All of them having similar routes run to Khalil Herbert having the least amount of routes run is super interesting. I wonder what that running back room is going to be like. Is there going to be a clear front runner that we can play in fantasy week to week? I'm not sure, but Rashawn Johnson having this much output in his very first game is telling. So maybe he emerges. That'll just be something that we have to watch. But Justin Fields... That rushing is always going to keep him relevant in fantasy. It's just going to be interesting to see if the Bears start winning some games. This was the most surprising result of the night. The Rams beat the Seahawks 30-13. to Stafford was 24-38, 334 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Awesome stuff from him considering what he had to work with. Kyron Williams had 15 carries for 52 yards and two touchdowns. Cam Akers had 22 carries for 29 yards and a touchdown. This is why Kyron Williams was one of my deep, deep sleepers. I just don't trust Cam Akers. His output is super inconsistent. It doesn't seem like he gets along with the coaching staff particularly well. And last year, there was good reviews about Kyron Williams coming out of camp. And a lot of people were picking him as a sleeper. And this year in the preseason, there was a lot of good reviews about Kyron Williams. So Kyron Williams is going to be a thing. If he had more carries than Cam Akers one of these games, it would not surprise me. So... Add Kyron Williams whenever you can if you have a bench spot open. Tutu Atwell led the way for all receivers. Well, he was tied with Puka Nakua, actually. Tutu did it on six catches. He had 119 yards on eight targets. Puka Nakua, 10 catches, 119 yards, 15 targets. So he was playing Cooper Cup's usual spot. So Stafford was probably like, hey, I'm used to throwing it to this guy on this play. Who cares if it's Puka instead of Cooper Cup? I'm just going to give it to him. Fifth round rookie or superstar, doesn't matter. And Puka showed up, so awesome stuff from him. Definitely an ad if you have a spot, but once Cooper Cup comes back, his value is going to go way down. So if you can trade Puka Nakua, that would be ideal um, because come week five, it's just not going to be like this at all. Higby had three catches for 49 yards. Tight ends didn't really do a whole lot today. Van Jefferson had four catches for 24 yards. It was assumed that he was going to be that wide receiver one, but... This is what what has happened in the past with Van Jefferson when there's been a receiver down. He kind of just sticks to his role and just keeps putting out stat lines like this. Four catches, 24 yards, five targets. Very Van Jefferson-ish. If you have him, I I think it's safe to drop him. Bryson Hopkins had a catch for 21. And uh, this is absolutely a typo. Kyron Williams, zero catches for two yards. That's bizarre. Uh, I'm pretty sure they mean one catch there. Moving over to the snap chart. Van Jefferson led in a big way, but again, it's just kind of, he's sticking to his role there. Tutu Atwell, good to see him on the field so much. Puka Nakua doing everything he can with those 63 snaps. Just amazing stuff there. Tyler Higby had 74 snaps, led all tight ends in a big way. Kyron Williams, look at this snap share. 53 snaps to Cam Akers, 28. Now, Cam Akers had more carries, but if Kyron Williams is running 29 routes to Cam Akers four, Kyron Williams is the guy. So add Kyron Williams wherever you can. That's the biggest takeaway here. And it doesn't matter if it's Cooper Cup in that spot or Puka Nakua. Whoever is playing that position in the Rams offense is going to get targets. So if you need to play a receiver next week, Puka Nakua is not a bad option at all. And if you have a spot on your roster for Kyron Williams, I highly suggest you make that ad. And it was a really rough day for the passing offense of the Seahawks. Geno Smith was 16-26 for 112 yards and a touchdown. 
This is vintage Geno Smith before last season. It's just weird that all of a sudden in his 30s, he just has the best season by far. And now he has one of the best receiver rooms in the league with Smith and Jigba played today, Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. And he managed 112 yards against a ragtag Rams defense. Outside of Aaron Donald, they don't really have a whole lot. Just bizarre stuff. Keep an eye on Geno declining this year. It's only one game, so that's not a definitive statement whatsoever, but it is something we want to watch out for. Ken Walker had 12 carries for 64 yards. Zach Charbonnet had three carries for 11. This is what I've been saying. Pete Carroll doesn't play rookie running backs until he has to. Eddie Lacy got hurt. That's how Chris Carson got an opportunity. Last year, Rashad Penny got hurt. That's how Ken Walker got an opportunity. This is going to be Ken Walker's backfield for the foreseeable future. DK Metcalf was really the only receiver who put out starter output. He had three catches for 47 yards and a touchdown on five targets. Will Disley led the way for all tight ends. He had two catches for 17. DJ Dallas had a catch for 14. JSN had three catches for 13. Tyler Lockett had two catches for 10. Ken Walker had four catches for three. Just a brutal day for receivers on the Seahawks today. And looking at the snap chart, JSN was still a a step behind Tyra Lockett and DK Metcalf in snap share, but that could be a result of his injury as well. Ken Walker pacing running backs by a good margin. Zach Charbonnet and DJ Dallas having the same amount of snaps is interesting. But the big takeaway here is Ken Walker, the clear lead dog, and Geno Smith, He might just be declining this year. We'll have to watch that. The final game of the night just ended. The Cowboys destroyed the Giants 40 to nothing. Dak Prescott was 13 to 24 for 143 yards. He didn't have to do much at all because they just destroyed them. Tony Pollard led the way for rushers. He had 14 carries on 70 yards and two touchdowns. Awesome stuff from him. Rico Dowdle had six carries for 24 yards. He's cementing himself as that power complement to the lead dog of Tony Pollard. Kevontae Turpin also had three carries for 14 yards and a touchdown. Deuce Vaughn had six carries for eight yards. Uh, And Dak Prescott had a carry for six as well. For the receivers, CeeDee Lamb had four catches for 77 yards. Really the only receiver who put starter output out there because this was such a beatdown. They didn't really throw it all that much. Brandon Cooks had two catches for 22. Tony Pollard had two catches for 12. Kevontae Turpin had two catches for 11. Jake Ferguson led the way in targets with seven, but only had two catches for 11. Michael Gallup had a catch for 10 also. C.D. Lamb doing that well is absolutely notable. Tony Pollard doing Tony Pollard things, even in an absolute beatdown. And Dak Prescott, don't read into the stat line at all. This only happened because they, they were up early and they stayed up the whole game. And Daniel Jones had an absolutely brutal day. 15 to 28 for 104 yards, two interceptions, no touchdowns. You would think being this far behind the whole game, he would have some passing output, but absolutely not. Tyrod Taylor also had two, was 2 of 2 for 6 yards. Saquon Barkley had 12 carries for 51 yards. Daniel Jones had 13 for 43. Matt Breida had two for nine, and Gary Brightwell had a carry for five. Surprised Saquon Barkley even had that much, uh, honestly. Darren Waller led the way for all receivers. This is something that's noticeable because he was this far ahead of everybody else as far as yards were concerned. Tied for the leading catches, tied for the leading targets. He was three of 36. Isaiah Hodgins had a catch for 24 yards. Lawrence Cager had two catches for 17. Darius Slayton had three catches for 15. Saquon had three catches for 12. Paris Campbell had a catch for two. It's it's fascinating that they didn't have more passing output because they had to play from behind the entire game. Um, just a weird day from the Giants. Really, the only thing we could take away from here is that Darren Waller seems to be that number one receiver, but hopefully better days are ahead for Daniel Jones. And that'll do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Follow at We Are Drafting on Instagram. We're going to be doing one of these game recaps every single day that there are action from the regular season. So keep it locked in. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.